first of all, thank you all of you for uh, joining today, this Friday, uh, late uh, Friday. Um, since many of you, this might be um, not, not, might not be the first time. And since you have heard several times the philosophy process and the approach, uh, today, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip and maybe uh, do it every alternate time so that it is uh, serves both purposes, not be repetitive to those who attend regularly and yet be more informative to those who might attend for the first time or after a long time. So today what I'm going to do, because Parag has a very interesting session, I've seen the slides, I would say financial services, our approach to financial services, uh, very well explained. I'm going to try and keep my commentary uh, relatively short and focus on performance, where obviously a lot of you might have um, questions as well, which I look to answer in the Q&A. Uh, but what this slide shows is a snapshot of PMS performance since launch around three years ago in April 2019. Uh, second quarter, as you'll see, was a fairly tough quarter and the market was down nearly 10%. We were down 13%. Uh, so 328 basis points behind, which is what really what we focus on, which is the relative performance. Year to date, market is down again, just under 10%, and we are down just under 16% for an alpha of uh, minus 590 basis points, or just about minus 600 basis points. Uh, this comes after a fairly strong couple of years in the market. As you'll see, 2020 market was up 18%, we were up 35%. 2021 market was up 32%. We were up 34 odd percent. Some partial, the 2019 was also a positive year such that since inception over the last three years, markets returned 12% annualized. We've returned 16% annualized net uh, for 400 basis points alpha or in cumulative terms, markets returned 46%. We've returned 63% for an outperformance of 17.66% net of fees. Uh, if we go, so this summarizes over the longer time period, and this is what you see is the market cap attribution analysis over this three years time. As I've always mentioned, what is more, imp I mean, equally important as alpha is the source of alpha, uh, where it has come from, because that will give you some idea of whether it is derived out of skill or is more of byproduct of luck. Um, and, and this is what uh, it shows your 68% compared to 46%. Uh, the difference of 22% is composed as, and this is gross of fees. These, all these analysis would be gross of fees. Only the first slide would be, was net of fees. So here the 22% gross alpha is split as 30% coming from stock selection, uh, which as we've always, uh, said and universally accepted uh, stock selection effect is generally considered as the skill driven component of alpha. The allocation effect has been negative headwind of minus 8%. Uh, sometimes allocation effect is positive, sometimes it's negative. Over time, over long periods of time, in my experience, tends towards zero. Um, um, but over the last three years, it's been negative as larger caps have done better than smaller caps sectorally also if you see but before we go to sector let me just share on the market cap in each bucket individual bucket the team has delivered very strong results so if you look at the large caps where about 60 percent of the portfolio has been invested on average performance in that category has been 54 percent compared to 49 percent of the benchmark not huge amount of alpha uh, it's um, it's 500 odd basis points of alpha, but as you know, over the last three odd years, I think the statistics suggest that vast majority, um, I think some more than 80%, uh, Bibek, correct me if I'm wrong, of mutual large cap mutual funds have actually underperformed. Uh, so it has been given, you know, so a very concentrated um, uh, leadership within large caps, a vast majority of Fund, uh, funds in large caps have underperformed. And in that light, the relative to pure group, if you will, the large cap performance is very satisfactory, though it can be better. And over longer time periods, it has been better. 
In mid caps, it's 140% return compared to 43% return. So beating the benchmark um, hands down. And even in small cap, you'll see 82% return compared to 18% comparable return in the smaller cap segment of the market. So very strong alpha across boards in pure group terms in each bracket amongst the uh, leading decile or leading quintile of pure group, if not number one in possibly in mid cap category. If we go to the next slide, shows sectorally the uh, return performance. Uh, again, of the 22% alpha, which is the bottom right hand side box, you'll see 26% coming from stock selection, which is positive almost across every sector, almost every sector. And uh, negative minus 3.62 allocation effect, predominantly the allocation effect is coming from utilities, as you'll see on the left hand side graph as well, utilities and energy. As, as those, those two sectors, we don't own anything. Um, so that those have been uh, considerable drags from an allocation perspective as those two sectors have done very well. Utilities, as you can see, over the last three and a half years, I mean, three plus years have been the best performing sector up by 142%. And energy has been third best performing sector up by 72% and not owning anything in either of these has been a drag over these time frames. If you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see the top contributors and detractors over the last three plus years. Uh, top contributors, you'll see you know, wide variety of names from across sectors and market cap segments. So CoForge is a mid cap IT company. When we bought it, it was a small cap. Naveen Florine, again, is a mid cap chemical company. Uh, materials call it when bought it originally was a small cap now both these companies are mid caps Abbott India as all of you know pharmaceutical company we no longer own Ipka Muthut uh, and Larson and Tubro in Fotec as we made the money valuation uh, target has been reached including Torrent Pharma but you'll see they come from pharma finance and IT services Bajaj Finance obviously everyone's familiar with large cap finance company, JB Chemical, again in pharma and Dixon Tech. Um, you can call it a tech company or it's more usually classified, I believe under consumer discretionary uh, category. So across various segments of the market, be it by sectors or by market cap segments, the team has identified some fantastic opportunities. On the Detractor side also, they come from across various market cap segments and sectors, starting from Axis Bank to all the way through, you know, some of the financial companies and consumer discretionary companies as are listed here. Uh, Infosys, I would just point out, while Infosys often comes up as a question, uh, even though we've done very well in Infosys at 65% total return since we purchased it, it's just that we don't own it as much as it is in the benchmark or in past might not have owned it in such high magnitude as it is in the benchmark. So even if you own 4%, whereas benchmark is 6% in that name, then if the stock does well, then it would show up as detractor. And that's been the case with Infosys here on the detractor side. Moving to the, so these are all over the last three odd years. Now we'll move to year to date. Um, Performance, as you'll see, has been uh, negative. Uh, so year to date, the net figure that you saw were 590. Uh, here you are seeing gross figure as minus 790. They don't always align necessarily uh, together, but this is what the, uh, the, so the net figure that you saw 590 is more accurate, but directionally, this is correct. 790 out of that 730s through stock selection. So it has been a tough year, but it's been tough here more from a sectoral perspective. If you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see roughly three and a half percent of the negative hit out of the 790 has come from um, selection or allocation effect. Again, energy and utilities being the two biggest contributors to that. But selection effect has also been negative, considerably negative on a year to date basis. If we go to next slide, please. 
from contributors and detractors year to date. Um, you'll notice on the right hand side, CoForge is the number one detractor, even after detracting um, at the highest level in the first six months, it still is, as you saw in the three and a half year numbers, it was the top contributor. Uh, but year to date, it has been a uh, detractor, persistent systems and emphasis at the bottom. So three out of five names have been IT sector. IT sector has been beaten down quite uh, badly year to date, particularly the mid caps and small caps, which these three belong to the mid cap space as concerns regarding US slowdown has hurt, uh, hurt these companies. On the right side, you'll see, you know, again, a good mix of uh, financial company, auto company, um real estate as well as a chemical company we move on then to talk about uh somewhat the uh anal analysis of the alpha pullback so uh this what you see here on the table the first column is the time period in the past over the past five years where we've seen big alpha drawdowns big alpha drawdowns of more than two sigma in magnitude, two standard deviations in magnitude. So our, um, just to give you just quickly some uh, numbers, over a long period of time, our average alpha has been 2% per quarter. Uh, two sigma is minus 4%. So one sigma is 3%, two sigma is 6%. So four, uh, two minus six minus 4% is two sigma. So, and, and on the positive side, two plus six, eight percent is the positive two sigma. So, what you see here is three times over the past, past five years where we've had worse than two sigma kind of uh, events um, and the starting date and the ending date. Um, so, 2018, um, 2018, while it predates the PMS strategy, but we did have AIF back then. So, it is the performance of that AIF. Uh, between August 18 to October 18, the alpha drawdown from peak to trough was minus 5.5% in a fairly compressed time frame of 48 days. Even though in the full year of 2018, we ended up generating 3% overall alpha, while 3% overall alpha is much smaller than you know our average annualized alpha. But 2018 was one of the best years for, for me in my entire career and uh, or, or the team uh, uh, over a long period of time because 2018 was a very difficult year for active fund managers, particularly all cap or flexi cap managers, particularly PMS, almost everyone underperformed by a huge margin. So uh, benchmark was like the top decile performer. So to have beaten the benchmark by 300 basis points that year meant we were amongst the very top few performers. But even within that year, the point here is that we had a time period of uh, one and a half months where the drawdown in alpha or underperformance was minus 550 basis points. Then it was 2020 when 17th March to 6th July, there was a period of 112 days where there was a drawdown of minus 6.8%. Even though for the full year 2020, this was a COVID year. So this is right after the COVID bottom when there was a sharp jump, that's what it is. I mean, 23rd March is when the market bottom uh, underperformance started 17 March. Uh, but despite a minus 6.8% underperformance during that uh, three and a half month period, overall for the full year, the alpha was 16.5% positive. What it means is the remaining 250 days, the team generated uh, some 23, 24% alpha. Um, now in 2020, we never had such a call explaining our performance and nobody really, nobody asked about performance in 2020 because the first quarter was a very strong quarter. Uh, we were up some 1100 basis or 1000 plus basis points, 10 percentage plus basis points. So despite a 6.8% hit, we were always positive on a year to date basis with a, in a very healthy uh, degree, um, to a very healthy degree. Now, but this time around, as you can see, underperformance started from 31st December uh, or, or close of 30th December, 2021. And hence the year to date figure is uh, uh, is really stands out as negative and this 
what you see is uh, December 20, uh, 31st December to 7th June, because 7th June, we hope, uh, an assuming year, the assumption year is, was the bottom of performance. And that drawdown was 7.8%. So what you saw earlier, up to 30th June, the underperformance was 590 basis points, but up to 7 June, it's 780 basis points, implying that in the three weeks uh, of uh, um, last three weeks of June or of the quarter, there was considerable uh, recovery in alpha. Uh, but we've analyzed here the peak maximum alpha drawdown. Um, and and, and what, what basically to summarize on this slide, this is the third time in the last five years. Uh, so it's not the first time, it's the third time in the last five years that such a, a magnitude of alpha drawdown or similar magnitude of alpha drawdown has happened. And even when I can't share on this forum, we can't share on this forum my our longer term track record. So when I'm used to manage for the prior 10 years before starting YTO, India dedicated fund, even there over a 10 year period, there were seven time frames. Uh, where we had similar magnitude of alpha drawdown. So it's almost every 18 months that such magnitude of alpha drawdown has occurred. Uh, it's just that this time it starts from December 31st and it's, 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 it's more visible because it's in the year to date number all throughout. Now, what we've done is now then went further to analyze what kind of environments leads to such alpha drawdowns. And interestingly, we found that every time, and not just the, over the last five years, but over a longer time period as well, every time uh, it, the alpha drawdown teams tends to coincide with underperformance uh, or outperformance of certain sectors where we don't own anything, like energy, utilities, or commodities in general, and government owned companies. So if you look at the, and, and many of you whom we've interacted with, you know, we, We've never owned uh, energy or utilities companies and hardly at all own any government owned companies. So when these, sometimes these sectors collectively do very well. And in those times, it represents a headwind to our performance. And what shows here is that in, two, uh, in 2018, there was a 7.6% outperformance of these sectors relative to our overweight sectors, we almost always overweight private sector banks, which is what, uh, or private sector financials, which is what Parag is going to talk about shortly. And we all always overweight consumer discretionary. So there was a 7.6% headwind in 2018 when we underperformed peak to trough by 5.5%. There was a 16.5% headwind in 2020. But this time around, there's a 26% headwind. And this 26% headwind is the strongest ever headwind in my 15 years uh, of managing, uh, professionally managing India dedicated mandates. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, most aggressive outperformance, I would say, of energy utilities and government owned companies compared to the rest of the market um, that I have ever come across. If you look at the, and hence the underperformance is somewhat higher, uh, uh, but you know, it's very understandable when you compare the magnitude of the moves in these segments. Now, what the right-hand side graph shows <clears throat> is that over the last five year, entire five year period, also these sectors has outperf have outperformed. So the red line that you see is the performance of these underweighted sectors, energy, commodities, and government-owned companies compared to the overweight sectors. So they were doing favorably till March 20, going into the COVID. But since then, they've fallen quite dramatically as illustrated uh, here, such that over the entire five-year period, if you see, they've outperformed by 20%, roughly. And yet, Despite that, over the five-year period, the team has generated uh, alpha. As you see, the blue line has gone from 100 to 130. That's the accumulated alpha. So the net alpha over the last five years has been 30 plus percent. So longer time period, if this headwind is spread out over a longer time period, the team's stock selection capability 
is more than able to overcome that headwind. However, it's just year to date, it has been so compressed within a six, seven month period that that's been uh, difficult to overcome as it has been so sharp over the short time period. You go to next slide. So there are two big factor risks in the portfolio. One is the underweight or non-ownership of these seg sectors, the government owned companies, utilities, commodities, and so on. And the other is overweight in SMID caps. So again, what you see here on the left-hand side, twice out of three times, uh, we've had the SMID cap also as a headwind. So 2018, while the sectoral headwind was lower, as you saw on the previous slide, the SMID caps, if you, those of you remember, SMID caps had gotten decimated in 2018. 2018 was the worst year in the last, since these indices have been maintained. It's been worst year for small and mid caps. So that was a big headwind, minus 14% uh, to us, which is the performance of SMID cap versus large cap. 2020, actually, that helped us. This, at least the SMID cap factor has helped us despite the sectoral um, headwind. But in 2021, uh, from December 21 to June 22, even the SMID caps were a headwind of minus 7%. So if you were to add the sectoral headwind and the uh, uh, market cap headwind, it is most acute uh, at about 33% between uh, uh, for this year to date period. Again, on the right hand side, you'll see that since inception, over the last five years, SMID caps have underperformed the large cap. Uh, uh, initially, the sharp underperformance came back uh, post COVID. And then since August of last year, they have been trailing. Um, but during this time period where SMID caps have trailed by about 15, 20%, the team has still been able to generate 30% alpha. Right? It's just that over the last six uh, or during the period from December to June, the combination of SMID cap underperformance and sectoral underperformance was very, very overwhelming. Uh, if we go to the next slide, that now shows the composition of the portfolio. We continue to not own any energy or utilities, as you'll see on the top slide. So 10% or underweight in energy, 5% or underweight in utilities. Um, Energy, as you all know, comprise of mostly government-owned companies by number, and then Reliance is the big, big name by weight. Probably 80% of the weight is in energy. Utilities used to be a much smaller sector till uh, not long ago, used to be 2-3%, but now with some very large companies in utilities like Adani Power, Adani Transmission, Adani Energy, and I guess I'm missing one or two other Adani companies here, uh, Adani Total Gas, you know, the utility sector has become much larger at about 5%. So in utilities, the government owned companies are there like NTPC and, and others, uh, but private sector companies, particularly ones I just mentioned, have become a bigger component uh, of the basket, but we haven't owned uh, thus far at least uh, any of these. And then government owned companies, we hardly have owned. Uh, though that is not listed over here. But otherwise, you'll see sectorally, we are well represented and, and well diversified across pretty much every other sector. Financials being at about 30% overall. From a market cap perspective, it's very consistent over long periods of time. About 40% of the portfolio is in mid and small cap put together at this time. If you look at the lower right-hand side, 58% in large cap, 23% mid, and 17 in small. Overall portfolio holdings are 56. We've had this discussion several times with you all. Uh, the number of names does appear large, but you can think of it as we have the best of breed of large caps, mid caps, and small caps. You can think of it as three concentrated portfolios uh, packaged together into one at the price of and convenience of, of one. Um, many other fund managers have you know, separate large cap, mid cap, and separate small cap offerings. Uh, we, as you know, have this core flexi cap um, pioneers strategy. So you can think of it as, and we show, saw the performance earlier in each market cap segment, performance has been at the leading edge. If you go to the last slide, this is the top holdings 
uh, in the portfolio. Uh, you will see the top 20 holdings here. Um, the top 20 and make up 67%. At the high end, names like ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Infosys, Nestle, um, Chola Mandalam, Titan, these are all Maruti, these are all or Asian Paints, these are all 3% plus positions. And then you have Cipla, Persistent, Astral, and so on, between 2 to 3%. Some of these, as you can see, in the range of 10 to 20, we have small caps as well, like Garware, Technical Fibers, and, and Indigo Paints. There are several mid caps here, Astral, Naveen, Florine, Abbott, Dixon. Some of these, like Naveen and Dixon, we bought when they were small caps and now have grown to mid caps. So this having the flexibility to own a larger number of names allows us to buy companies in the portfolio, some you know great companies in the portfolio, even when they're small caps. We don't have to wait till they become mid caps or large caps before we can buy. If we own, own only 20 names or 25 names or 15 names in the portfolio, that would be the handicap that we would not be able to buy uh, small caps. So um, these are just representative companies. We have another 30 companies that make up the remaining 33% of the portfolio. If you see, so as is shown in the previous slide, you can think of it as a typical large cap company on average. If you go to the previous slide, a large cap company typically is about 3% in weight. A mid cap company is 1.5% in weight and small cap companies slightly under 1% in weight on average. 